and welcome to the award-winning Waterman Wellness, your pathway to health and wellness with local experts as your guides. I'm Michelle Wargo. In this month's episode, you'll learn about a procedure that helps alleviate monthly discomfort some women feel without side effects. A local man shares his recent experience helping orphans in Haiti live a better life. And you'll find out why a dip in the pool can be the prescription for recovery. We begin with an important patient safety achievement by a local hospital. Florida Hospital Waterman has earned its fourth consecutive A rating from a national organization that monitors and assesses patient safety. It is the only hospital in Lake County to achieve the highest grade from the LeapFrog group. The watchdog organization uses more than 25 measures related to patient safety to determine the grades which consumers are encouraged to consider when faced with a hospital stay. Florida Hospital Waterman is extremely proud of our consistent A rating in high quality and patient safety. We continually look and monitor all of the variety of government and world health informationals that are out there to see and to stay ahead of the curve to assure that we're giving the best protection to our patients and to our staff so that we provide the utmost in safe care. More than 2,500 U.S. general hospitals were assigned scores in April of 2015, with about 31% receiving an A grade. We now turn our attention to a disease that affects approximately 10 million Americans. It involves obstructions of the arteries and is often not diagnosed because people dismiss the symptoms. Most commonly, uh, people um, refer to peripheral vascular disease or disease of the lower extremities. The main symptoms are pain or slowing down, discomfort, pressure in the lower extremities. People can have symptoms also in the arms. Peripheral vascular disease also refers to uh, disease in the kidneys or, or bowels. They have obstructed disease in the bowels or they have hypertension because when the kidney arteries are obstructed, the blood pressure increases. The concern is that they will continue with symptoms and they will slow down. And slowing down, they become sedentary and it increases the risk of atherosclerotic disease. Dr. Freyfeld says some people may not have any symptoms of PVD or often dismiss the symptoms as signs of aging. That's when patients and their primary doctors should pay attention to risk factors. For specifically for peripheral vascular disease or disease of the lower extremities, uh, smoking is a very important risk factor as well as diabetes. If patients are having symptoms like pain in lower extremities or numbness or difficulty walking, usually they're referred to us uh, for an ABI, which is an ankle brachial index. Uh, measuring, we measure the pressure uh, in the arms and legs and see if there's any differential blood pressure between them. And then uh, we, do, we will do an ultrasound Doppler to uh, see what areas are obstructed and then proceed with a CAT scan or an MRI. The treatment of peripheral vascular disease includes exercise and medications to improve the symptoms. Even if they have pain, if they continue exercising and force themselves, that, that's what they should be doing to improve the collateral flow. Florida Hospital Waterman wants you to learn more about prevention of PVD, and it's offering a free seminar to the public. Call 352-253-3635 for more information. For people who have had orthopedic surgery or some other lengthy medical condition, their doctor may prescribe aquatic therapy to get them moving again. Experts say beginning a therapy program with water exercises helps build confidence and stamina for the road to recovery. Florida Hospital Waterman does have uh, an indoor rehab pool designed for use of therapy. And in our pool, it is always a one-on-one -on -one situation. There's one therapist, one patient. There are a variety of conditions that will benefit from using aquatic therapy, primarily orthopedics, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, anything for general strengthening, um, any kind of deconditioning. As an example, if someone has spent a long time in the hospital or in a rehab facility, their overall muscles are deconditioned. Peggy McLaughlin of Tavares thought walking would be impossible after spending five months not using her left leg. I had surgery on my foot and was not allowed to ever put any pressure for walking. I could not bend my, my toes or any, my foot, 
and it's loosening up. My foot was just like a rock. When you haven't used it, it becomes very hard and immobile. I was walking forward and backward, sideways, holding onto the sides and pretending like I was riding a bicycle. We want them to build initial strength. We want them to build initial, to gain initial range of motion. And there's a lot of confidence building there that they realize, oh, I can probably do this on land. I, I'll be able to do this. It's incredible because I didn't think I would be able to even walk, but the doctor said that I will with the therapy and everything and with walking, learning how to walk here in the water first is a lot easier than learning how to walk out, out on land. To learn more about the physical therapy options available at the Florida Hospital Waterman Rehabilitation Institute, visit the website on your screen. Our next story features the efforts of some Lake County residents who recently spent their vacation improving the lives of others. Their experience is shared by a Florida Hospital Waterman employee whose first mission trip was extra special. I learned about the missions trip uh, from through the hospital with the Florida Hospital Waterman Foundation and thought it would be a neat experience for, for me and my son to go on. And so we went and signed up, found out we were going to Haiti on a, on a work and, and witness trip, and we were going to be doing construction and a medical clinic. The construction was at a orphanage uh, there in Gonaive. Uh, that was started uh, by a pastor who had been an orphan himself. And right next to it is another community called Jubilee. And those were the two communities we worked in. And third world country definitely describes it. There's, I think, 30 children, uh, about 15 boys and 15 girls, up to age 18. And they find them on the street and bring them in. One of the girls, they told us, was found living in a, in a graveyard and so, and it's thriving and doing great. They were happy kids from what we could see. And it was obviously because of the orphanage. What we constructed for them was a kitchen. Uh, we got the walls completely built. Uh, the kitchen that they have currently is a lean-to up against the wall. I thought it was the outhouse. It certainly made me feel good every day I was doing construction to think that one of these days soon, the, the, they'll be able to cook in an actual building and not a lean-to. So we would go to a, a, a church building and set up an area where we would do physical exams and evaluate the patients. It'd be another section where they had the pharmacy. And if there was a condition that they needed a prescription for, uh, antibiotic or a blood pressure medication, then we would write that on a piece of paper. The patient would then go sit and wait for the pharmacist the conditions that we saw most were, were infections like scabies, we saw a lot of scabies, um, skin infections that we would need to treat, and then upper respiratory infections. I think the reason that I went on this missions trip was to show Christ to people who are suffering. I think for, for me and Wyatt, the reason that I wanted to go and take him was to teach him how to serve other people um, and to show him you know, how good he has it in the United States. The 30 kids at the, at the orphanage, their lives will forever be changed because we built a kitchen that they can have healthy food from and they can grow and they can find new orphans who they can continue to take care of. And without the support of the people in Lake County, that wouldn't have happened. Gantz and his son were joined by both of Wyatt's grandfathers, as well as 26 other hospital employees and community members. This was Florida Hospital Waterman's 23rd mission trip. Coming up next, a Tavares gynecologist explains why women who experience monthly discomfort may find relief with an outpatient procedure. We'll look at men's health with insight into a condition that often causes sleepless nights for people under 50. And it's grilling season. When we come back, Chef Dave has a delicious twist on burgers. You'll find additional health and wellness information in Waterman Wellness Magazine. Visit watermanwellness.com to arrange for home delivery, and you'll also find a listing of the specialists featured in this month's episode. First, here are some community events that you might want to consider attending. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the award-winning Waterman Wellness, your pathway to healthy living with help from local experts. I'm Michelle Wargo. We now turn our attention to men's health. While it's not a topic many men would like to talk about, discomfort during or abnormal urination is common and often can be treated. Many men who come in with any prostate concerns have some concern that they may have cancer of the prostate. More commonly, prostatitis, which is an inflammatory condition of the prostate, and BPH, which stands for benign prostatic hyperplasia, but we think of it as overgrowth of the gland consistent with aging. As men age, uh, the prostate grows along with them, and it doesn't do much in the way of growing until puberty. It stays relatively dormant until about 40, 50 years old, um, and it's at that point that it starts to cause uh, problems. Uh, such as urinating at night, having trouble urinating, taking longer than one wants to start that urine stream. Treatment for prostatitis can be as simple as taking medication. Doctors stress that you or your loved one should see a urologist for appropriate treatment. Many times the initial presentation for uh, BPH type complaints will come from a, a patient's partner. The wife will say, uh, geez, uh, you're getting up five, five and six times at night to pee. You're, you're driving everybody crazy. And, and with prostatitis, it's not a great way to screen for, uh, for it. It's a symptomatic uh, complaint. There are a myriad different uh, presentation possibilities. If you are experiencing irregular or painful urination, you'll find a specialist who can help by visiting the website fhwaterman.com. Many people head to the grill for quick and easy dinners. We now head to the Conry Creation Health Center kitchen where Chef Dave is ready with a meatless meal that surely satisfies. Summertime is here and that means it's time to get to the grill. We have Florida Hospital Waterman Executive Chef David Atkinson here to share with us an easy and delicious burger recipe. And we also have registered dietitian Stephanie Bassett here to tell us why it's so good for us. Hi. Hello. So what is this burger that's actually healthy? We are making a portobello mushroom burger. So as you can tell by the name, it doesn't have any meat in it. It's a meatless burger. Yes, I love, love it. Correct. So what do we need when we're getting ready to grill a portobello? Well, we're gonna marinate the mushroom in some balsamic vinegar and some olive oil. And then we're gonna make a little salad with the roasted peppers, some herbs, and some more olive oil. Well, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna clean the outside of the mushroom first. We have a damp paper towel. We're just gonna kind of go over the outside of the mushroom. And then on the inside of the mushroom, we have all these little gills where we can also collect dirt and stuff. So we're just gonna take a spoon and scrape those gills out of there. Ah, I didn't know you were supposed to do that. So we're just gonna place the mushroom in our bowl, add our balsamic vinegar. This is a canola oil and olive oil blend. And then we're just gonna let this sit for about an hour, and then we're gonna grill it up. Okay. So now that our mushroom is marinated for an hour, we're gonna put that on the grill. So why is this good for us? Mushrooms have a good source of selenium, and that's something that we don't eat enough of. Selenium actually helps with um, prevention of cataracts. It may also help with hair loss. As our mushroom cooks, we're gonna make a little salad out of the peppers. Just roasted red peppers, yellow peppers, green peppers, whatever you have on hand. A little olive oil. Fresh basil. And parsley. We're just gonna stir that up and that's gonna be an accompaniment for the top of the burger. So the mushrooms cook basically like a steak or a chicken breast. You wanna let them cook till they get nice and soft. And then we're just gonna put it together like you would a hamburger. We're just gonna use a red leaf lettuce and then our little pepper salad. Hmm, that looks perfect for summertime. It's refreshing. Nice and bright. Yeah. Get a nice lemonade with that. And that's it. You'll find the recipe for the balsamic glazed portobello burgers at watermanwellness.com. We turn to women's health now. 
with information about a procedure that may help alleviate monthly discomfort. One in five women would experience heavy bleeding. Starts probably around age 30s to 40, really peaking in the 40s, and probably is the most common cause of a visit to a gynecologist. And the most common cause, the underlying cause, is hormonal imbalances. Josie Goodman of Mount Dora sought relief from Dr. Perot because her monthly episodes were affecting her quality of life. I had brought my labs from my primary doctor and she had noticed that my hemoglobin was low and I had told uh, Dr. Perot that I had, had heavy, painful periods that could last anywhere from 10 to 14 days. Not only was it painful, heavy periods, but I was also tired, having difficulty keeping up with my children. Dr. Perot decided Goodman would be a candidate for an endometrial ablation. The endometrium is the inner layer of the uterus and it, it is what thickens just before your periods. As a matter of fact, the work of hormones, the work of estrogen, is to thicken that lining. And as that lining becomes thicker and thicker, um, progesterone slouches that off. Well, in patients with hormonal imbalances, there's almost always low progesterone. And therefore, the lining of the endometrium becomes thicker and thicker, and therefore your bleeding becomes heavier and longer and even with pain. So the endometrial ablation thins that layer out and thins it out permanently. That night I went home. My friend dropped my kids off from school. I ordered pizza and we were back in our routine. That was a year ago and I have not had a period since. It changed how I get to go out with my children and how um, much energy I have and it improved my quality of health and how I feel um, and I'm really glad I, I did it for myself. It's minimally invasive. I call it a win-win situation between the physician and the, and the patient because the patient is able to come in, have it done, can be done in an outpatient setting and get to go home and continue her normal activities and go back to work at a relatively short period of time. Like any procedure, the endometrial ablation is not for everyone. Visit the website on your screen to find a local expert for a consultation. We hope you've enjoyed this month's episode of Waterman Wellness, your pathway to healthy living with help from local experts. Be sure to watch for the July episode right here on Lake Sumter TV for some of the following stories. A local expert explains why he's excited about advanced treatment for hepatitis C, a common and potentially deadly virus. We'll hear from a Tavares pediatrician about skin conditions that can affect children, especially during the summer. And Chef Dave and Stephanie will return with a cool dessert that's quick and easy to make. To learn more about the experts featured in this program, please visit watermanwellness.com. Until next time, I'm Michelle Wargo for the award-winning Waterman Wellness.